Here's the project, uh, Andrew Bugs. Uh, if you, we've been talking about manually finding security flaws in an app by understanding how they work and looking inside the app. But of course, the most practical way, if you just want to find the flaws, is just use a uh, vulnerability scanner. And this is going to use Git. If you install a desktop version of Debian, you'll have Git installed. If you have a headless one like I do, then you have to install it yourself with apps install Git. Anyway, now I can Git clone the Android bugs framework. Just copying it from the online repository, and there it goes. Go in there, and then I can get the app I want to install, which is going to be this app called Genie.apk. It has a lot of security flaws. It's a real app from the App Store, but it's a few years, few years old now. And there it is. Genie.apk is coming down. So if I do ls minus l, I can see uh, here's my Genie.apk. It is 39 megs. Of data. All right. And so here's how you run it. You just run androbugs.py is the code to run. So it's python androbugs.py minus f genie.apk. Couldn't be simpler. And uh, oh, I don't have Python. Wow. Maybe I have Python 3. If not, I'll install it. This is a headless server. Okay, I don't. All right, let's do sudo apt install python. Uh, no installation candidate. Python is Python 3, 2 to 3. Uh, that's, let's do sudo apt update. All right, this is screwy. This is, this is a headless Debian 12. And so, let me just Google how to install Python 3. Probably Python 3 on Debian 12. All right, all right. The easiest way to install Python on Debian 12. Okay, what is it? Um, apt show Python sudo apt update sudo apt install Python 3. Well, okay, that's pretty obvious. Three. Okay. Python 3 is already there. Okay, then I just needed to execute it with Python. Th uh, just a minute. You already have Python 3, and then you told me you didn't have Python 3. What's going on here? Oh, there it is. All right, control D. I don't understand why this didn't work the first time I did. Python 3, ah, missing parentheses. Okay, this needs to run in Python 2. Ah, okay, this is an old app. So let's find out how to install Python 2. It used to be Python minimal on Debian 12. Python 2. Um, sudo apt get install Python 2. Well, let's see if that works. So it would be sudo apt install Python 2. See if there's a Python 2 available? No? All right. Um, I've heard it called Python minimal in some other distributions. Let's see if that works. No? All right. Uh, go back to here, install Python 2. This is an old app, but apparently needs Python 2, which is pretty gruesome. Um, VNV is not what I'm looking for. You can still install Python 2 from Debian 11. Let's see this, okay. Looks like one of these answers is gonna tell me. This might, might need to use an older version of uh, and of uh, Debian for this. Okay. Um, okay, you have to add this. And then, to, now you'll have Python 2.7. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. This will give me Dead Snakes PPA. I'm going to try this one. Create this file. So it's going to be sudo nano, that file. All right, and in there I'm going to put in the bullseye repositories. Okay. 
And now I do sudo apt update. Now let's see if I have Python 2. I do have Python 2, okay. That's one way to do it. You bring it, Python 2 is pretty out of date, but I managed to install it from an old uh, version. Let's see if this thing will now run in Python 2. All right, so it's gonna work, and this tells me you know, this tool doesn't seem to have been maintained, and it's pretty old, so uh, there is another vulnerability scanner we'll use later in the project that hopefully is more updated, but this one works. And so it gives me hash values of the APK, and it's still running. Now it's gonna pause for a while, hunting through the code, uh, taking apart the APK and hunting through it for flaws. And then within a minute it will finish and it'll give you a long file name to the report. And there it is, okay, the report is done. So I have to edit this file. So I copy it and then nano it. All right, and now I can just read through it. I think control Y goes down a page and not on this thing. Oh, I got a click in there. Control Y should do it now, nope. All right. The down arrow will work. Um, oh, okay, it's a function down that goes. All right, so here key store is not protected by a password. Uh, let me make my window bigger so we can see things um, as much as possible. It's finding all kinds of flaws in the app and most of them are not very sensible. It does use exec, so it executes code in the command line, which is risky if that code contains data from the user. Uh, it might give, give rise to remote code execution. But the one thing that is most serious in here is the failure to uh, authenticate the um, your critical runtime. This is one, runtime command checking. It's using runtime inject, so that is the kind of thing where you can, it could lead to command injection. And the one to find here is SSL validation. SSL security is a serious flaw, and you can search with control W for SSL security. Oh. SSL underscore sec, okay. There you go. And so the point is, this is the, uh, it does not check, it allows, it if it's accepted even if the certificate is invalid. Um, that's the flaw here. Now this thing is uh, wrapping around in a way that cuts it off. There, which allows the connection even if the certificate is invalid. This is the classic man in the middle vulnerability that we pick up with um, BERP in dynamic testing. So you don't really need to run BERT and test for it. You can just run a tool like this to automatically find it. And I'm sure there are more luxurious commercial scanners um, available too. So that's all I wanted to show you. This is a simple way to do a uh, automatic vuln check. And uh, there's another one we're going to use another vuln scanner later, I think. But um, yeah. What's, what's that? When you do when you type git com. Git com. Git com. Right git clone, a git clone copies the whole repository. So you have this URL, if you, let's take a look. There's a good thing, if you, if you go to this repository here um, and look at the website. There, everybody has websites, it's a public archive. When you click on it, it will have a URL someplace here, let me, sh um, I'm used to seeing it right there. There's supposed to be a, uh, there, there's the URL. So you can use the command line git to clone this URL, or you can download it directly as a zip file. And they both amount to the same thing. But from the command line, you do git clone that, and you'll get a whole, all the data in all the data in all these folders. In the directory, in the local directory, just by going to the right tree? Yes. And I think the, the and the, you can even specify which version with other git commands, you can query what versions are available, you can get just one particular version and so on. Uh, the git command line command is how you can control everything about your git um, interacting with these git uh, archives. Git command line control? Yeah, you, the experts use this git command line for everything. You can upload files if you have the right password, you can change things, you can change versions. You can uh, leave comments explaining what the okay, different versions. Are. Yeah, yeah. Git has a lot of options, and clone is the simplest one. It just gives you the whole current copy of the latest archive, which is usually what you want if you're using it. If you're the developer, then you use the other Git commands to manipulate it and update it and 
change it and such. Yeah. yeah, Git is a good thing to know. And if you're good at Git, you can search through the old commits that have been deleted and you can find secrets that are left there by mistake. They might have uploaded an earlier version and then deleted some files, but they're still available on Git. There's no way to clear the history. So it's a common flaw. Is it good? Do you look at directory, is it a local directory, or is it the same? Yeah, local directory. When you do the git clone, um, when you do the git clone, it created this thing, Androbugs framework. And when you go in there and do ls minus l, it's got all these files and another directory called reports and another directory called tools, and that's exactly what you see here. Here's the tools. Yeah, yeah, it just downloads the zip and unzips it essentially, yeah. I don't know if it does it exactly that way, but it gets everything. It gets the, exactly the same structure that you see here on the Git web page. Good, it's a good question. I'm sure other people have a similar question. Let me stop.